my name is Faith Maloney, and I'm one of the co-founders here at Best Friends. Welcome to our January blessing. Thank you all for being here and for all of you at home. This is our call to gathering. The year ends and we begin a new circuit around our own beautiful sun star, twirling amidst the galaxies. Take a breath, quiet your heart and listen deeply. There is so much coming and going and yet feel how underneath it is all a vast silence and a spaciousness that holds everything in its balance. In the long run, I'm hopeful. Yet in human incarnation, there are inevitable periods of difficulty, personal and collective. Yet with wisdom and a good heart, our personal sufferings can temper us and help us live with dignity and find an indestructible spirit in ourselves. And in the same way, we can learn to bear the difficulties of the world with compassion and courageously do what we can to mend the broken places. Yet difficulties are never the end of the story. There is always a return of the light. A most trustworthy and blessed project is to align yourself with compassion, to plant seeds of goodness, to use the creative force of your life to bring understanding, awakening, and love to all. Foster trust in life's renewal power. Martin Luther King Jr. describes our collective journey with hope. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And Pablo Neruda explains it further. You can pick all of the flowers, but you can't stop the spring. Renewal is happening. Take quiet time to listen to your heart, to meditate, and to rest amidst, amidst the great turnings. Feel the renewal of spring that can be born in you. Align yourself with goodness. Let yourself blossom like a lotus or whatever unique flower you are, shining in the world, spreading your seeds of love amidst all. Good evening. My name is Josh. I'm one of the caretakers here at Angel's Rest. And at this point of the program, we will read through some of the names of our little friends that we had lost here at the sanctuary during this month. In Cat World, we had lost Q, John Deere, Maple, Gotti, Stevie, and Potato. In Dogtown, lost Sherman, Peak, Tarleton, Fred, Modeski, John Butler, Revolution, Primus, Adriana, Burio, Meadow, Charmaine, Jackie Jr., Polly, and Artie. In Wild Friends, we had lost Samantha, Savali, and Rosemary. In Paragarden, lost Sasha. Jasmine, Rowena, and in Rabbits, we had lost Annie. Tributes that were sent in were for Scotty, Alvis, Lonnie and Zoe, Yoshi and Pretty Boy, Angel, Snyder, Steve Irwin, Selig and Wayne, Kali, Sebastian, Rambo, Jack, Sam, Abby, and Steve, Josh, Princess, and Kim had lost her dog, Raisin, and she writes, I loved her goofiness, how much she loved me, her big barks, her big trot, how she would dunk her whole head in a bucket of water, big sloppy kisses, and I will miss the sound of her feet shuffling around. Sandy and Sandra wrote about Blackie. You were for most of our life a cat that chose to live alone, but you were never alone. You were always loved and cared for. 
and near the end, we realized that you became friendly, wanting to be petted. You are at home with us now, forever in our hearts. Now at this point, we'd also open up for members, whoever's here, at the actual blessing here to talk about uh, maybe some of their other stories or the little guys that they would like to reflect on. I'd like to talk about Penny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Penny was uh, a wonderful dog. In fact, I'm calling her now the most perfect dog in the world. She was a brindle pit bull from a drug bust in New Jersey. And she was rescued from that terrible situation. And through the agency of some wonderful folks in New Jersey, she came here to live and she was Living at the sanctuary for quite a long time, she had some issues. You know, some of those we don't talk about a lot, but she had kind of faked her video. Uh, we do ask when people are applying to bring a dog here, they send a video of the dog interacting with other dogs, etc. And she she pulled it she pulled it off for the video. <laughs> but when she got here, she said, "Just kidding. I really don't like other dogs." So. Um, she came to me after having spent quite a long time here at the sanctuary and I had her for five years. She came to me at 10 and she died at 15, just a little while back. Um, and I miss her terribly. And I'm now utterly convinced she is the, best, the most perfect dog in the world. But I also know I've had many other dogs that would have fit that description as well. And I hope in the not too distant future, another one will come and live with me. Bye, Penny. My name's Tom. I'm a caregiver in Dogtown. I'd like to start tonight by remembering our colleague and former coworker, Haven Diaz. Haven worked in Dogtown for a number of years. I worked with him personally for two of those years. Uh, Haven loved people and Haven loved the dogs in Dogtown and Haven made a real impact on lives in Dogtown as well as visitors and volunteers who would come to help us with our daily work. So I'd just like to have a, just a brief moment of silence for Haven. Thank you. Hope you're in a better place, Haven. I'd also like to uh, <clears throat> mention my mom's dog, Sammy. Sammy was a little Sheltie that she got uh, about 15 years ago. He was her constant companion in her home um, as she lives by herself. Um, Sammy was faithful, fun-loving. Sammy was a great uh, asset to my mom in her later years. Um, Sammy just grew old and eventually um, was afflicted with the mo with the maladies that most older dogs are afflicted with. And so my mom um, helped him to cross about two weeks ago. She's very sad. I'd like to give uh, just a word of, of love and encouragement to my mom at home. <clears throat> There's two dogs I'd like to talk about. One of them is named Tarleton who Josh mentioned on the list. Tarleton was a longtime Dogtown resident. Uh, he was actually a legend in Dogtown. We don't use that term loosely. Tarleton was uh, a, a huge presence in Dogtown. When I first met Tarleton, it was in 2011, and he was residing in the area of Dogtown that I had just moved to. And I asked the caregivers there, who's the hardest dog here? And they all said, Tarleton. And I said, good, let's start with Tarleton and let me get to know him. And so I did. And Tarleton had a whole repertoire of tricks that we used to introduce him to people. He knew sit, he knew down, he knew uh, shake, he knew high five, he knew how to twirl. Um, and we would put Tarleton through his repertoire of tricks when introducing him to new people. And then they could toss him a couple of treats and then he was usually good enough to go for a walk with, with that person. Tarleton didn't care much for other dogs. 
Although when I met him in 2011, he was living with a lovely Rottweiler mix named Gypsy May. When Gypsy got adopted, um, we tried some other dogs with Tarleton and he just couldn't make that work. So Tarleton moved on to other housing accommodations and ended up living as a single dog for the remainder of his time here in Dogtown. Tarleton hitched a ride on a transport here from the Ohio area. Uh, they picked him up in St. Louis and Tarleton made Dogtown his home uh, for those remaining years. Tarleton was 15 when we helped him cross. The last dog that I'd like to talk about is Fred. Fred was also a senior dog in Dogtown. He was 11 when we just crossed him five days ago. Fred came to best friends with a few other dogs from a place near Scottsdale, Arizona. This was in the year 2014. I met Fred shortly after he arrived and I knew Fred from 2014 until now. I was his caregiver for probably 90% of that time. Uh, Fred initially showed that he didn't have a lot of self-confidence. He was very insecure and it was very difficult for him to meet people. Fred did not trust people very easily. In fact, my first interaction with Fred, he bit my hand while I was taking the leash off of him. But as time went on, Fred and I developed our relationship and um, we got to know each other very well. It was almost to the point I would describe our relationship as where we could just read each other's minds. I hope I can hold it together. I knew how to read Fred, his eyes, his body language, and Fred knew what I was thinking when we were together. Fred had a difficult time meeting people, but he trusted me to introduce him to new people. And we went about it in a, in a way that uh, Fred would not feel threatened and would not feel insecure. And so he had a small circle of friends in Dogtown over the years. Some came, some went. Um, Fred did like other dogs. In fact, Fred preferred to live with another dog rather than to be by himself. And so the number one question as Fred aged and his body took on arthritis and spondylosis and he was afflicted with other uh, painful ailments, the number one question when trying to find a new run mate for Fred was, can this dog have cushion beds or will they destroy the cushion beds? <laughs> and if the answer was yes, they could have cushion beds, it was a candidate for a dog that we could introduce to Fred. Um, Fred lived happily in a run with three or four cushion beds and he was uh, often seen just lazing around as he aged. Um, with Fred more recently, um, he, he did start to show signs of his age and the pain that he was experiencing through the arthritis and spondylosis that he had. He was also um, just recently developed some issues with his liver and right here near the end, um, his liver was failing him. So I sat with Fred and he talked to me through his eyes. He told me that he was tired. He told me that he was ready. And five days ago, we helped him cross, sorry. My time spent with Fred was the most valuable time I've had in Dogtown. Fred taught me lots of things about being around insecure, fearful dogs who were willing to use their mouth. And in turn, I taught Fred how to meet people safely so that he wouldn't feel threatened. Fred was my 
teacher, my student, my favorite dog, and my best friend. And I miss him greatly. Thanks. My name is Jess and I work in Dogtown and I'd like to read some words about Sherman written by his former caregiver, Tim. It's with a heavy heart that we share the news that our handsome Sherman has crossed the Rainbow Bridge. Sherman was a legend in Dogtown and turned 15 years old last week. He lived in the old friend's kitchen and boy did he love that. He was the first one to greet you in the morning where he eagerly awaited some butt scratches and the last one you snuck a treat to before turning off the lights at night. Sherman loved being the center of attention with our volunteers who helped wash dishes and prepare meals. No cleaning up of dropped kibble when Sherman was around. He loved his treats and was not shy in letting you know when it was time for some freeze dried blueberries, cookies, or a licky mat overflowing with peanut butter. Sherman was the first one out for a potty walk and he could be stubborn. I mean, independent at times. Nope, not crossing the road today without a treat first. Nope, not going back to the building without a treat first. <laughs> there are so many people who loved Sherman and made his life special. All his caregivers at Old Friends and the Fairway who took such good care of him. The dedicated volunteers who worked with him in hydrotherapy several days a week his best buddy Angie who took him on weekly outings, and all the local and visiting volunteers who walked him. However, a special thank you goes out to his amazing foster mom, Eileen, who welcomed Sherman into her home this past year. How lucky that Sherman found his guardian angel, and all who knew Sherman are deeply saddened by his passing. But we take comfort in knowing that he spent his final year in a home that loved him deeply and spoiled him rotten. We believe that Sherman was met at the Rainbow Bridge by Sheena, and now they are both happy and healthy and running around together. Rest in peace, little man. I also want to talk about a dog named Peek, who was in Dogtown for just a short time. He came to us from a crowded shelter in Las Vegas, and he was a little Pekingese. <laughs> uh, he came to us quite sick uh, with lots of different ailments. Um, really bad dental disease, unfortunately quite a large tumor um, inside of him as well. And uh, he got some attention from our vet staff and we, we got him set up with some pain relief and everything like that. He was not a surgical candidate, but uh, the best part about Peak's story is that he got to go to a foster home for a little bit. And so despite the fact that looking at him upon arrival, he may or may not have had a lot of love in his life, we'll never know but he got a lot of love and care uh, before he passed away and before his foster mom helped him cross. Also, there were several puppies on our list this month. Uh, everyone tends to think of puppies as so fun and playful, but they're also quite fragile. And despite the best care, they can sometimes pass away. And so I just wanna honor all the puppies this month with this little poem. I give you this one thought to keep. I am with you still. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not think of me as gone. I am with you still in each new dawn. Hello and good evening. My name is Cassandra. I am a volunteer at Best Friends and a longtime supporter. And I wanted to share the story of myself and my bird, Angel. It will come as no surprise to anyone who knows parrots that they can be quite particular about their people. And Angel was no exception. He was one choosy little cockatoo. And he had even earned the nickname El Diablo during his time here at Best Friends. He was often described as sweet, but unpredictable, a bit naughty, 
and was known to chase away any potential suitors looking to adopt. But Angel wasn't El Diablo or unpredictable at all. He was simply waiting for the right person, his chosen one. I adopted Angel nearly seven years ago from Best Friends on February 9th, 2015. It was the happiest day of my life and the beginning of what would become the very essence of my heart. Angel was and is the love of my life. He was a remarkable little soul, just the sweetest, most loving, endearing, and joyful little bird. Angel was so full of life and he painted my world and the most spectacular technicolor. Life was beautiful, happy, and complete with the two of us together. We were most certainly bonded, he and I. But fate had other plans, and last year we discovered he had cancer and an inoperable tumor, a devastating diagnosis. I loved and fought for him fiercely up until the very end. It was an impossible decision but when Angel let me know that it was time, with the help of our vet, I held him as I gently guided him towards the light and helped him cross the rainbow bridge. I brought Angel back to best friends and placed him here at Angel's Rest just two short days ago. As I was saying my final goodbyes to my beloved, it began to snow and I believe it was Angel pouring his dusty dander down on me. <laughs> his way of letting me know that he was near. While there are many lovely memories over the years, too many and too numerous to count, I would like to take you back to the beginning of when it all began. I came to volunteer at Best Friends in early 2015, and on the last day of volunteer work, I decided to pop back over to Parrots and say goodbye to my favorite caregivers and some of the birds before leaving town the very next day. As I made my rounds, I happened to briefly stop in front of a cage where a fluffy little white ball of feathers with the most gorgeous yellow crest hung on the edge of his cage, beckoning for my attention, same as all the rest. I stood in front of him in awe and enamored with the fact that he was cooing I had never heard a parrot coo before. It was the most darling thing. I said to him, oh, you're so cute, and then moved along. The encounter lasted maybe all but a minute. That night when I retired to bed, little did I know that I would dream about the sweet little cockatoo that cooed. The next morning, instead of leaving town as planned, I just knew in my heart that something was compelling me back towards the sanctuary compelling me to return back to this little bird. The caregiver and parrots was surprised to see me when I explained that there was a birdie I would like to see and learn more about. I did not remember his name. I only knew that he cooed. As the caregiver explained some of the more challenging aspects to his behavior, Angel suddenly leapt and flew from his cage over to my shoulder. Scared, I hunched over a bit, slightly nervous that I was about to receive an angel signature and a new piercing to go along with it. <laughs> but instead, I coyly looked at him from the corner of my eye and he leaned over and cooed at me and said, good boy, angel. The folks at Parrot Garden called it the lightning bolt. The choosy little cockatoo had finally found the one. When I arrived at Best Friends, I had no intentions to adopt only to volunteer. But Angel had chosen me. I signed his adoption papers that very day. In honor and loving memory of Angel, the most handsome, best little birdie there ever was, and the love of my lifetime. Thank you. Well, at this point, we'll offer a, we'll offer a moment of silence for all our little friends that uh, we had lost along the way. <clears throat>
benediction. Blessing for the fullness of this day. I bless this day in the fullness of good it already contains. In the many occasions it offers to listen deeply, to be of service to others, to express gratitude moment by moment, and to keep my mind so filled with love, beauty and joy that no negativity can find even the tiniest crack in which to set foot. I bless this day in the infinite opportunities it gives me to love, to love and bless every human I meet, every creature I pass by, every plant I behold. For all are but the, all are but the manifold expressions of the infinite life that undergirds all. Truly, I bless this day for the wonderful adventure it can become as I walk through it with the eyes of wonder rather than boredom. Use every opportunity to express peace rather than irritation and choose love over fear. Thank you, life for this day.